at CCI International 2019. It's been such a pleasure having the crowd here for the past three days. It's been filled up. There have been amazing matches, which is obviously no surprise. We've had the best players in the world here. And today we're in for another treat as we see the semi-finals. Uh, before we begin, we would like to thank our sponsors, the Cricket Club of India and JSW. As per usual, just uh, the house rules to make sure we have a good time. If we could request the spectators to cooperate with our security and our volunteers, they're just trying to do their job. Uh, also, just respect the players when they're on court, so just keeping the mobile phones on silent, avoiding flash photography, um, minimal talking and movement during rallies would be just lovely. Um, also, the juniors, if you want to meet the players, please, after the match, if you could come stand over there, we'll make sure you get, get a minute with them. Uh, that's about it. Uh, well, let's begin. First on today, from Kolkata, Ramit Tandan was a very successful junior in India. He went on to study at Columbia University, where he played for the Columbia squash team. Uh, after working in New York City, he decided to take on being a squash professional full-time. Ramit was the wild card at the 2000, 2017 edition of this tournament, where he caused a stir after knocking out uh, the Spanish number one, Borja Golan, who was world number 18 at the time. He's already gotten off to a roaring start in this tournament. He beat Tom Richards in the quarterfinals in straight sets, which is definitely not easy. Please welcome, ranked 59 in the world, Ramit Tandan. a loud high five. Um, up against him is the top seed of our tournament. Tariq Momin joined the PSA in 2005. He reached the highest world ranking of world, num world number four last year, a ranking which he currently holds. He beat uh, Diego Elias and world number two Ali Farag to win the Channel Vast Championship a few months ago. His experience on tour, his raw talent and superior athletic ability has allowed him to beat two very young and determined lads, Yusuf Ibrahim and Iker Baharis yesterday in four tough games. Please welcome, from Egypt, Tariq Momin. All right, guys, let's have some fun. And your referees for this match are Dheeraj Singh and Rohit More. Half time. Good evening, everyone. We are here at the uh, CCI International JSW Watch Circuit 
2019 edition at the another beautiful night at the uh, Cricket Club of India East Lawns. Uh, my co-commentator today is Aditya Jagdab, world number 120. Had a had a very good uh, uh, tournament. Had a tough loss against uh, Karim El Hamami. He's with me in the commentary box. Good evening, Aditya. Hey everyone. Good evening. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's my first time commentating, so I'm really excited. Um, and these are two players I know really well. I grew up playing with Ramit, and uh, we've had some epic battles over the years in juniors, and trained with Tarek a bunch of times when I went to Egypt as well. And yeah, really excited. What do you think, uh, Rishad? What's your, who's your money on in this match? Uh, firstly, uh, good that you've got a little bit of insight on these players. I think you'll be able to bring a lot of value uh, to your to the commentary just from the perspective of. From the, pers from the perspective that you know these guys and their games. Uh, to answer your question, <coughs> I'd have to go with Tarek in three. Uh, not discounting uh, Ramit, but I think uh, Tarek is getting his groove on through the tournament. He had a uh, relatively tough first round match against uh, Yusuf Ibrahim. Uh, played, played a little better yesterday against Iker. And I think I think we'll see a little different uh, uh, version of Tarek today. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he's top five in the world means he knows how to show up at the big occasions, and he's known to you know he's called as the wiper on the tour, and it's usually for his like quick sharp movements and his quick sharp finishes. So excited to time. see that. But at the same time, this tournament has thrown up its own set of upsets. You know, like Mahesh beating Marwan 3-0 and. Like it's not been easy for any of the top guys, you know. I think apart from Faris, everyone else has probably struggled. Omar Mossad got knocked out early. Marwan got knocked out early. Tarek has had two close three ones. So I think, you know, if any, if Ramit, this would be the best opportunity for him to, you know, in front of his home crowd, to knock off one of the top seats. So A absolutely, Aditya. Do you, would you, uh, would you say that it's maybe the conditions, the Indian conditions, maybe the humidity is what they're not used to. A little bit of the heat is that the differentiator, I or think are we just getting are some of these younger Indians just getting better and better? I think it's a bit of both. I also think that uh, if you're playing European players, I think that might be a factor. I think James might feel the heat a little bit, yeah. but for someone like Tarek who lives and trains in Egypt, like the conditions are not too dissimilar. So you know, usually the Egyptians they will resume the, the conditions seconds. they train in and play matches are not too dissimilar to this. So hopefully, like that shouldn't be too much of a factor. But at the same time, I do think. Like the Indian level and the fitness the fitness of the Indians has definitely gone up a notch. So if you saw even Mahesh, he had a 3-2 in the first one and backed it up with a hard 3-love against Marwan and then again a tough 3-1 and he still looked like he could go on, you know, so... Correct. Absolutely. So, looks like... CCI International 2019 semi-final match. Ramit Tandon of India to serve Tariq Momin so Ramit of Egypt to, kick to kick receive off. best of five games. Love all. I think Tariq's going to try and assert his sort of dominance and, you know, show his confidence early on. Try and take a few fast points here and see if he can build a quick lead. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see that already. Out. So he's, he's done exactly yeah. what you were... And out. One love. ...seconds ago. If you saw his match yesterday as well with Iko, he was 6 or 7 love up quickly, but the thing that Iko did was he kept... He just hang, hung in there and eventually he got his opening. I think Ramit just has to weather this early storm and hopefully... Yeah. Because he has Ramit skillful enough to figure out a way to get used to the pace. He just I think uh, needs some time. Aditya, are you aware if uh, the two of them have played on the uh, PSA this tour? This is their first time. First time. Okay. I'm assuming they've trained together, right? And I think they've played together in Egypt. Is that? Yeah, I'm guessing like, Ramit is a junior. He used to go to Egypt quite a bit to train, uh, like me. So I'm not sure if they've played too much. There's a great yeah, shot by Ramit. Great, great hands there. Yeah. Hand out. By Ramit. One all. Yeah. Even with Tarek's speed and athleticism, he was still really far away from that, so... Absolutely. Ramit obviously is based in... Um, he goes up and down between Calcutta and New York. And uh, in Calcutta he trains with Sora. So he's probably used to, you know, playing at a higher pace. 2-1. Yeah. He he's has Sora as a sparring partner, partner. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah.
And he's always going to be dangerous because he has a very skillful game. Plus, today he has nothing to lose and he's not under any pressure. So Yeah, and, and uh, Amit has two gone all. through this tournament uh, relatively unscathed from the perspective of the kind of matches he's played. Uh, he had a Down. sort of obviously was hurt and out uh, and therefore he got a walkover yesterday uh, he had a relatively easy match against Tom Richards who we understand was a little bit under the weather and uh, a relatively easy first round match against Josh Masters so he's going to be fresh for this one for yeah. sure but I feel like that can work both ways as well so Starix had those hard matches in his life so he's a little bit more used and to out. Three all. feeling and playing under that pressure where Ramit sort of I think this is the first match where he's going to get tested in these conditions. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can see how tight they're playing down that backhand wall, not yeah. giving each other a chance to volley at all. It's a great wide cross court. Yeah, that's nicely dug, dug out by him. It was a tight forehand drop by Tariq, but skillfully dug out. Okay, that could be a stroke. Stroke to Moomin. Stroke to Moomin. I think Ram has done uh, negotiating these first two, three points. He's by no means looking over or, uh, you know, like the ranking, there's a slight ranking difference Tariq being top five and Ramiz being around 60 odd, I think. You know, but at the moment, it's not looking like. I got this attic, so. No, absolutely. Yeah, he's looking very calm, cool, collected out there. A little short there. That's why he doesn't want to keep it. Oh, forward. that's a perfect backhand drop by 5 3. That's why he wants to avoid that area and front to the mid is where he wants to avoid. That, that's Tadic's strong point, yeah. And then trading blows down that backhand side, just waiting for that opening. No let. No let. He's giving a no let. Ball was passed. Ball was passed. There is a line behind the player. No let. Hand out. 4 5. So I think possibly Tarek could have made a little bit more of an effort because he played the weak shot. Mm -hmm. And I think since Ramit plays a good deep shot in the corner, Tarek probably would have been expecting Tarek to go around him a little bit more. That's a nice use of the lob there, getting himself out of trouble. Tariq loves using those wristy, wristy shots, those little uh, half board. The reflex is in the middle. Yeah, Tariq is. Great shot by Ramit. Brilliant shot by Ramit. Lovely to, uh, five ball post. Tariq, do, Tariq doesn't think twice about going short. short you know, yeah. he, he, he loves that front area. And and he's very brave. Like, yeah. If you see his matches, even if it's the fifth game at 9 or 10 or if he has the opportunity, he goes for it. Uh, just like that. Just like yeah. That. And out. So Ramit Six really five. has to make sure, even if he's in the lead, he's still playing it, trying to keep it tight. And You want court services? Court services, please. And obviously, it's very humid here, yeah. so the players sweat a lot. We had a peculiar incident yesterday where James Wilstrop asked for Mahesh to get him put on a headband because he was sweating so much, yeah. which I found really interesting. And Mahesh, to his credit, did get a headband. So. I, 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 I guess there's nothing in the rules that you can force a player yeah, to put up a, a yeah. wristband or a, a headband, a headband present, on. Yeah. But I've seen a couple of times where I remember a match about a few years ago where they asked the player to change his socks because the socks were so wet and yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess when it when it becomes uh, a possibility that the court becomes dangerous, dangerous to play on, exactly. uh, that's you. when the referees can intervene and yeah. maybe suggest a change yeah. in apparel. I feel like this little break will do Ramit a little bit of good too. You know, he's weathered the early storm and. You know, just gets a little bit of time to just reset and go yeah, again. Yeah, absolutely. And it uh, looks like Ramit's put, put on a headband. Head <laughs> They're having a little laugh about it Six as well. 
This, is, this middle area of the game is obviously extremely important because either you know one person pulls through or it's going to keep going like six or seven hours later or so it'll be interesting to see how it pans out from there. Absolutely, that's a tight drop and even a tighter counter drop there. Tarek's very dangerous Seven in that five. area, you have to be perfect otherwise. That's why they call him the Viper, you know, he slides in there and... It's a little too loose there from Ramit and Down. just... 8-5. Hitting the tin, top of the tin. Uh, it's a little loose too, Tarek puts it away. 9-5. Yeah. I mean, see, these are, these are cheap points oh, that yeah. Ramit has to yeah. avoid and a player of uh, Tariq's class is just going to take Do you full think advantage of it. Because of the effort he's had to put in the first 5-6 points, then maybe he's loosened up a little bit or is Tariq's quality just standing? I, I, think, I honestly think there's a bit of a uh, drop in concentration. So maybe the stop didn't actually do good. It, yeah, it didn't do Ramit much good, I think. He was playing quite well before the Down. break. And out, 6-9. And this is where Tarek's very dangerous too, because if he can go for those winning shots when he's down 8-5 and he's up 8-5, he definitely will, you know, open the court up and mm -hmm. really go for his winners. So yeah, absolutely. He'll just build on his confidence. Yeah. I'm just floating a little bit on the backhand. I think we hit the ball a little bit harder and punched it more on the back. That, that should be a stroke, simple that? stroke there. So, to Tandon. 7 9. Ahead of him on the backhand side every time. That's why he's generating that pressure. Yeah. So obviously, for most people know, but Tarek is actually married to um, the women's world number one, Rani Malvalili, who is an incredible player herself. So it's a true squashing family, you know? Yeah. Safe to say they'll win the mixed doubles quite easily. Oh yeah. I think it's safe to say the kids will be pretty good squash players too. <laughs> Is and out, 10-7 game the ball. Game the minute it comes loose, Tarek's on it in a flash. And so far, it's been a very... Uh, the pace has been very pedestrian. Yeah. Just too too much floating stuff. Yeah. And I think that suits Tarek to a, to a T. Yeah. But Ramit's game also isn't a power. It's yes, more yeah. control, it's yeah. more... Yes, right. 10-7 game ball. Yeah, but like, but yesterday, if you saw Eco was hitting it hard and like playing at a high pace as well. And that definitely brought some level of discomfort to Tarek, but so far, yes, yes. Left. so far I don't see uh, Tarek uh, yes, uncomfortable at all. Game ball. I think Ramit has to, uh, not that this game is over, but if he ends up losing this game, he's really going to have to rethink his strategy. Mm. Uh, his game may not be power or put a lot of pace, but floating it so much is just yeah. not going to get him any power. Yeah. That cross -code drop yeah. attack 11 7. Yeah. Game to moment. Moment leads. One game to love. The first tournament I ever won, when I was eight, 2002, I wasn't supposed to go for the nationals. And I...
Bowman leads one game to love. So, love all. It'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see what Dalip, uh, that's Ramit's uh, coach, as uh, what he's able to strategize and come up with. I think Saurav was sitting with him as well. Okay. I'm sure one love. Some yeah. Tips. So there's a like cross court of the serve where Tarek's got it three, four times now where he's managed to volley drop it and that's the rally off in defensive format. Yeah. Good shot. I just, I just feel that this kind of, this kind of game suits Tarek to, to Two perfection. Love. There's absolutely no pace on the ball. He's able to take his time and put in his uh, little dinky balls whenever he wants. And he's hitting it to perfection at right now. And, and I feel he's just going to just grow in confidence and get braver and braver, just like that. Trying to punish him a little bit. Good with Paramount. He's definitely putting a little bit more, more pace. Ball, yeah. yeah. And it, he has to do that if he's going to have any kind of impact on this match. It's it's but it's if you look at it's Tarek has just Down. been Stagnant, more and or less stagnant on the tee, yeah. and uh, making Ramit do a lot of work. Even though Tarek made an error, it was a moving shot today. So. Good love again by Ramit. Uh, those balls are not going to work, not at this level. Yes, let. A cross court. Yes, let. Sorry, One, two. In the flash and actually yeah. yeah. He, was, he was lucky to get away with it, I think. One of the reasons, though, I'm very happy to see Ramit at this stage as well is obviously he went to college in the US as well. He went to Columbia University. And I always enjoy, we come into um, college in Trinity as well. I always enjoy when these players do well because. It breaks the myth that if you go to college and get a good degree, Thank you. you can't be a top sports player, you know. Uh, so I really enjoy seeing Ali Farag. And out. 3-1. I think, uh, obviously, education is really important, but these guys out here proving that it doesn't have to be one or the other. You can do both and still be extremely successful. At, you know, so I think it's a huge credit to Ramit to survive an Ivy League curriculum and still come out of it and you know do as well as he's been doing. So, uh, so Absolutely, Ali, yeah. And you can put your put your name in that list as well. Huh? Oh, great That's shot, Bayram! Right. That's a love. Hand out two three. Ramit using his wrist very late to just flick the ball across. Good shot by Barrett. A lovely shot. Great shot, by Ramit. But if you see the two points that Ramit won, he's three all. Hit high risk, perfect shots to win the points. So yeah, and that's what uh, a world number three or four, what Tarek is, is going to force you to do. And Ramit pulled it off, but I wonder if he'll be able to do 11 points of that. You know, that's the yeah, challenge. That, that's the challenge, absolutely. Yeah. We took the words out of my mouth. Yes, let. Yes, let. But once again, like all. the first game, and he's living up to him in the start. You know, hopefully at four or five all, there's not a big break by Tarek. That's when I think Tarek will really start making his move. So that's yeah, Ramit has to absolutely. That's like yeah, the yeah. Has, yeah. has to be just four three. Uh, has to be much better. Every opportunity he gets, he's going to attack. What's good to see, at least, it's a nice clean match. Yeah. The referees are not getting involved at all. If we don't, very clean yeah, as well. correct. They're not very aggressive towards the ref. They're not very. They keep the game keeps flowing, you know. Yep. Oh, well, it's a nice hold. Really nice hold there. He drew him and into the back corner. And in Good the services, minute, please. Click that. Very nice shot.
Yeah, please, quickly. I'm it's always from the junior years, he actually had, has very good wrists. He's able to wait until the very last second before changing the direction in which like, he wants to put the ball. So he sucks people in one way and then uses his wrist to direct the ball somewhere completely different. And this is about He's the same time that we had a board cleaning uh, last, time, last yeah. game. Now, and then Tariq made a move on. Yeah, thank you. Ramit lost his length in that and he lost his yeah. rhythm. So let's see if history repeats itself or Ramit is able to keep his concentration and finish this game you know, pro much in, a, yeah. in, a, in a positive manner. Yeah. Hand out for all. Ramit actually has a younger brother as well, Rishi, who was also one of the top juniors and who went to Colombia with him as well. And they both were part of a very successful Colombia team that actually when Ramit went in as a freshman, they were outside the top eight. And as a senior, I think Ramit as captain led them to the top four um, in college squash. So it's pretty big to jump for them. Yep. Yes, Lynn. I, I, didn't, I didn't really see yes, much Lynn. in that. For all. I was looking a little bit yeah. for the player more. The racket yeah. came up by early. Yeah, correct. Sort of crap started into the. Sam has been using a lot of lot more as well. So I think that, but that length has to improve. Right. You can definitely feel like he's putting a little bit more into a shot spot. Beautifully picked up by Tarek. No drop of concentration so far. Yeah, that's maybe that's too early to tell, but. You know, right now. Aditya, what I'm noticing is every time Ramit is hitting a length, yeah. that length, no that length ball is typically no above the cut line. Hand out, 5-4. Especially on the backhand. Especially on the backhand, which, yeah. again, I'm, I, I know I might sound repetitive here, but... You're going to the player. Uh, There's a line that's just him. going to, um, that's just going to benefit Tarek. He's, he's, there's just no pressure being put on him. And the backhand volley is his... his Prime area, yeah, like that's why he loves yeah. that volley drop. Yeah. And when he goes below the cut line, he's hitting in the halfway in the service mm -hmm. box. And that would be a stroke to simple moment. stroke there. Yeah. So tomorrow, Alex also generating a lot of six four. Look at his length. Most of his length, but the second bounce is dying. So now he's not being able to get behind in a good strong position to pick it also that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah agree. Hand out. And these are the balls. Five these six. Are the kind of points that Ramit is winning. You know, a little bit uh, risky it's shots hard, yeah. put in the nick, and yeah. you know he's still he's still in touch in this game. So, and he has the ability to make those consistently as well. So this is a question of. Find the right time. Oh, it's a good shot by him. Good hold. Actually, superb set of two. Oh, and then these are yeah. a little bit loose. There's a superb set of two, three combinations going on. Oh, and then the in coming in. Hand out. Sub five. By combination, was actually broken down by a short length on the forehand that hit the side wall. Until that, he was. So you can be as dominant as you want, but if you had one bad length, you suddenly go to a defensive position, yep. an attacking position. Absolutely. That's good length. That's much mm -hmm. better length than Ramit, ah, but that's... Really that's that Tarek's bread and butter. That's Tarek's bread and butter. Yeah. And a beautiful width over there. Oh, the stroke. Stroke to Tundan. Stroke to Tundan. Hand out. 6-7. Ramit's in touching distance here. He's not let him get away. So. Court services. I don't know if this is the right tactic because every time Ramit asked for the court services, he actually won the point. So I feel like I still understand if I don't know. Maybe I feel like when he's winning points, he should keep 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 the rhythm going. Yeah, yeah. And maybe try and knock off two three points before before, before asking for court service. service. Exactly. Yeah. See, that's a new dimension that's been brought into this game. You know, a uh, few years ago, this concept of court service didn't exist. Yeah. But now you can actually use it as a tactical 
Yeah, advantage as well. Obviously, the rule does say that both players have to agree, so you can't yeah. single-handedly <laughs> call for the court service whenever you need a break. Sort of thing, so. I still think Ramit opening the court up a little bit yes, too early. That's a very, very loose ball. Mm. I, I think he's a bit lucky to get away with that. Yes, let 6 7. I wonder what Ramit's feeling physically because it is obviously a higher pace probably to what he's yeah. used to. So, yeah. interesting to see. Well, that's Down, a good, that's that's a a good error for Ramit actually yeah. to get like 7 all. He's gone cheap even point. Now, cheap point. Yeah. Got the uh, court service break a few yeah. sec a few minutes ago, a couple yeah. minutes ago. He's gonna have some air in his lungs to really yeah. push for the finish line now if he can make it. And Tarek is putting a little bit more yeah. pace on that ball. But this is the first time in the past couple of rallies you've actually seen Tarek being hustled a little bit, you know, like a little bit out of position. Correct. Sometimes see that again, he goes one way, he goes back the other. Now it's just the interesting is if Ramit can make use of that. Down. And out. 8 7. Right enough at the moment. But again, I do think that Tarek's causing that by hitting such good length. But yeah, Ramit always rushed, so he's not in good enough positions. Yeah, agreed. Good tight end, Paramount. The post is just a bit too yeah. loose. But good recovery. No left. Aditya, what do you think about that one? I would have probably given that a lot because yeah. even though Ramis had to turn, by the time he turned, there Alex is sufficient room to swing, play so the he show. would have hit it. There's always a safety factor there, you know. I feel like. No let, 9 sub. If you're encouraging a player to hit that ball, you're taking a chance with your with his opponent's yeah. you know, body as well. So. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I would have given that a lot. Yeah, I, I think so too. I do agree with you. Uh, that's a harsh no let. I think definitely not a stroke because I think he saw it late. And, you know, yeah, there was no question of a stroke, but it was a, ha a harsh no let. But anyway, play goes on. Let's see if he can get it out of his system. Maybe even after no, that was that was just uh, I ten uh, seven. Uh, the big game ball. ball, big point and desperation. I wonder if the last decision was still playing on his mind a little bit. It looked a little bit like frustrated. Uh, yeah, exactly. But you know. Uh, these guys, I think, have to realize that you're not going to get every referee's decision or your way, and you just have to treat the next point as the, a new point and try and block it out. Uh, Down. That's just. Uh, that's just. Eleven seven. Game to moment. Moment leads. Two games to love. It was two years ago that I played my first international tournament. So I was really nervous going into the tournament. But I had this feeling that I could reach the finals. I was 10-9 up. My opponent hit a 10. And that moment he hit a 10, I just actually couldn't believe that I actually won the match. So from that point, I've just realized that that is all I want to be doing.
Ramit has just got a major, major uphill task here. Yeah. Um, something dramatically needs to change if he's going to even take a game of Tariq now. Yeah. And I think he needs to step it up and maybe needs a few. Uh, stroke to moment. Stroke, yeah. yeah. Stroke to moment. I'm, One love. I'm just, just finding. I'm just finding his uh, approach just too passive. There have been there have been certain junctures where he's put pace on the ball and. Uh, trouble Tarek, but it has to be consistent for a good five six points at a time. I think every time you know, got a sniff in it, Tarek's also very smart. He's agreed to let the cleaners come on and take this thing out of play a little bit. Absolutely, and that's just right? that's just too good. Tarek loves too the combination. If you see a lot of times he'll play that short drop and then hunt the cross court and then play the straight right. Just deep drive and a quick board. So he works in those two combinations. Yes, let. Yes, let two love. That's a very good um, thing for juniors also to see because I see a lot of juniors they play a shot which they think is a winner. Oh, that's too good. That's too good. Three they love. They play a shot which they think is a winner and they just sort of relax or step back. Yeah. The idea is that you play a good shot, a working shot, and you're hunting that next ball. Keep the pressure up constantly. Yeah. Which is what I think you can see Tarek doing. Yeah, absolutely. Really at, at the level you guys playing are playing, you know. It's not enough to just hit one shot. You need to back it up with four or five good shots to just win a point. And that's something that the juniors have to uh, keep in mind. That's a good one. And out. With as well. One, three. And drop and follows it up with not the tightest drive, but with enough pace in it to get it past yeah. Tarek. Yeah, and die in the back four. Down. Yeah. Two, three. I think Tarek won't be too unhappy with that error. If he gets it up, he wins the point. So I think he's, <coughs> he's two love up. He's three one up. Point. So what so do you think would be? Do you think Raman needs to get it like slow it down massively to or pick it, pick up the pace? To I, I think slowing it down massively is just not going to work. Uh, Ramit has to, and you, and you said it before that that's just not his game. Yeah. He likes to play at this medium to a slow pace game. But if you're going to compete at this level, you you need to have a backup. No let. You need to have a backup game plan. And no let. I'm not three all so far. He needs to put a little bit of elbow into those shots and get get that pace going. Right, folks. I haven't really seen Tarek make any like high pressure lunges or crazy movements or like Yeah. He still looks like he could have another gear. Mm -hmm. Even if Ramit's not comfortable putting the pace on, maybe he needs to be hunting the volley a little bit more. Just to take that little bit of time away from Tarek. Uh, ah. Down. It's hand out. It's almost Both like one three. one step forward, two steps back. Yeah, and and uh, pet, uh, you know very s basic errors is uh, unforced is the right word. Look at Tarek, he's generating so much power and pressure from his drives. Defending has better getting more in deep and more easier than one two. It's a beautiful play by Ramit. That's a great recovery by Ramit. And out for all. I think it was a great pickup with Tarek to begin with, and then Ramit again, like expecting the pickup to happen, followed it up and won the point. Against many other players, that Ramit's first shot would probably been a winner, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So did a great job to follow it. Oh. Oh. 5 4. Court services, please. See again, Tarek's called for it. I feel like. No, Ramit called for it. Oh, uh, Ramit. Yeah, I saw Ramit calling for it. Big and point I He's going to step out, get his towel. Again, exactly. I think, yeah, again, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. I think at yeah. five all, now Ramit's in the ascendancy, and yeah. it just. I'm not sure, maybe Ramit also needs a break, but. It's just not helping. Yeah, it's not helping. Because he's, he's just put that beautiful cross court, backhand cross court into the nick, drop, drop ball. And uh, that's when you need to build on that momentum. Like you see a lot of the Egyptians, or even Marwan, when he was playing with Mahesh, you saw if he got a point or Thank so, you. he was grabbing the ball and rushing to that. Even Mahesh did a few times, actually rushing to the box to serve yeah. quickly and make use of that momentum, you know? Yes, absolutely. 
five four from the left. Eleven point scoring, it's very easy to get that switch of momentum and rattle out three four quick points. Correct. And also the other thing that happens every time they take this break, the white ball doesn't work like the black ball. It gets colder a lot faster. faster. Yeah. And Tarek loves the cold ball. He, loves he the can cold do his boss and cross court drops and stuff exactly. like that. So that will stay that much shorter, yeah. at least for a rally or yeah. two. And then five again he goes to five, seven five or eight five and then Ram is back now to see the I immediately he went short yeah. quick. I think just tactically maybe No let oh. Mr. Tundan, I need you to play these shots. <laughs> the minimum interference, no left. What do you think of that, Richard? A little harsh, I think. Harsh, yeah. I mean, okay. he had gone through yeah. an excellent no interference. Hand out. But at the same minutes. time, like, there was enough interference to make sure he gets there, not in the best position to play. Yeah. I feel that should have been taken into consideration. I'm just finding the referee's interpretation of a no let to be just way too harsh yeah, sure. these days. I think it's very extreme. Yeah, it's very extreme. Yeah. And I think... That's a nice shot. Yeah, lovely, shot. lovely. I think you also have to take the match situation a little bit. You know, if it's five. a 9 or 10 or if it's 50-50 decision, I think you should stick to the safe point and let, and let the players sort it out on court rather than making a decision that takes that control away from the players, you know. I'm yeah. seeing a lot of 50-50 calls that could be let's become strokes on all that and it's taking away from the player winning a point, you know, then... Absolutely. Sort of the, the ref becomes the center of attention more than the game to getting the concentrated game. on the players, you know. Correct. Which is not the case. Like for me, the ref should just be the facilitator and the game should move on. Oh. Good get that Ramit pressure is on. Ram is done well to hang in there. Oh, he's guessed right. And he might just get a stroke out of that. Stroke to Thunder. That was a really nice Seven exchange. Five. It had everything in it. Yeah. A do or die guess with Ramit as well. Yeah. <laughs> he got away with it really well and then Left showed side. some good, I think, squash smarts to wait for that knowing Tarek would be running Correct. forward towards the tee and just took him in the swing and took that stroke. Yep, absolutely. Ah, could have gone straight drop there. Yeah. Just let. That's a simple letter. There was yeah. a bit of interference. Yes, Ramit tipped tip tip off his Tarek's feet. There is sufficient interference. I can understand what Tarek is He would have raised the ball. Because he's had a couple of... Ramit had a couple of no left given. You are in the line. So you are also there. Tarek's wondering why it's all that this time. 7-5. Okay, so we have the third game interestingly, po inter interestingly poised. We've got mm -hmm. Ramit got a two-point advantage here. Now... He's really need to going to need to tighten up to yeah. take this to take this game home at yeah. least. Good shot again, but Tarek nice is so pass. good in that corner. Ramit managed to pick it up. Nice lob. Ramit under pressure here, and that's and that might stroke just be a stroke. To moment. Yep. Stroke to moment, hand out six seven. This is where I feel Tarek gets most dangerous. You yeah. can start uh, seeing the finish line. Ah, it's on the loose one by Ramit, too early. And again, that's, yeah. that's just a mid-court drop ball. Tarek using Nine, now Nice, well. yeah, yeah. And... That's Tarek, bread and butter that, shot again. Out. That, that looked out, yeah. Out! out. Close call, but the refs decided it's out. So seven all. Uh, back to seven all. It'll be interesting to see what happens now. Three or four big points coming out for Ramit to stay in this tournament. He's played a good game, though. He's oh, down. This is what happened in the third game, uh, second game as well, Aditya. Eight seven. Some very very cheap points. No need for that at this point, and that's all that Tarik needs. That little bit of encouragement to take the next two three points. That's just a little too loose and it's been dealt with appropriately. 9 7. The game, you see Ramit was right in that 6 or 7 on, and then yeah. he just sort of. Just fizzled away. Yeah, had a bit of a and, ball, you know, and now we are at. Uh, in, in what? 10 we're 7 at, match ball? We're at uh, from 7 all to 10 we're 7. about almost how Ramit had a good game and he's looking close and yeah. just moved up too quick from that point. Oh, again. That's it. That's the end.
11-7. Good match, match by Tarek. He just did to enough love. to win, but I, I thought Ramit Kuhn did a lot better, honestly. 11-7, 11-7. Do give us your thoughts on the match today. Um, yeah, uh, Ramit, uh, as I said yesterday, is, uh, is quite a skillful player. I've known him since he was that young, uh, when he used to come to Egypt and play uh, at my club. Um, I've always seen the talent in him, and I played with him when he was much younger. And I thought this uh, this kid is uh, yeah, it's going to do well. Um, today's match was uh, was quite great. I think he. I mean, the rest he's had is, uh, I, I don't think it worked to his advantage. Um, sometimes when you're just, uh, when you don't get enough uh, match time on court, you, like when, when you go on the match the next day, you're not on your toes a little bit. I had some, uh, some decent matches yesterday and the day before, so I was more alert, which gave me an edge today. Um, but overall, I think he played really well considering the circumstances and it was it was a, a very decent and fair match which is always great to have um, so yeah I wish him all the best he's made the semis in, the, in a big tournament like this so it's it's a great achievement for him as for me I'm happy to be in the final and um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's match So like you've said, you have played a couple of really good matches coming in. You've played Yusuf Ibrahim and um, Iker Paharis yesterday. So they're up and coming players and Ramit today. Uh, what do you think according to you would be sort of an essential difference between a top 10 player and everyone trying to get there? Uh, you know what, the differences are always uh, very minor. But like when I was coming up, I always knew that the difference is, is just this much, but in every you know, in every aspect, a little bit more experience, a little bit more uh, stamina, a little bit more uh, mental strength. You know, when you add them up, they make quite a difference. But the level, like the the game has been improving so much in the past few years, and all the levels, like I would say, from the world number one until the world number fifty, the yeah, the margin is not that huge. You know, you could have an upset. From like I've I've seen the world number one lose this season to 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 Joe Macon who was not seeded at the time in the top 40. Um, you can see more of this happening and um, and and as I said the game is, is progressing. Everyone's just working so hard. So I would say experience and mental toughness would make a little bit of a difference towards the top level. Yeah, it's definitely something to take note of for everyone in the crowd. Um, so, any thoughts on the upcoming encounter? It's going to be a good one between James Wilstrop and Faris Dasuki, who's obviously making a major comeback. So, what are your thoughts on that one? Well, yeah, it's going to be an interesting match for sure. Um, James, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have to say anything. Everyone knows how good he is. Uh, Faris as well has been been doing so well on the tour and it was very unfortunate what happened to him last year but I, I, I saw him come back uh, this year uh, this month actually I like we played before he came here and I, I watched his games he's, he's playing quite well so I'm expecting a decent match um, the, the 
the thing with me, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get used to playing opponents who have nothing to lose against me every every day. Uh, so yeah, they. I mean, the winner of, of today's match is probably going to feel no pressure at all tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm getting I'm getting used to dealing with the, with those circumstances, and they get, like they're giving me more experience, which is good for me. So whoever wins today, um, it, it's going to definitely be a good match tomorrow. Congratulations, Tarek. We'll see you in the final tomorrow. All right, guys, before we go anywhere, we would ask you to please give us your attention for a few more minutes. Uh, this upcoming bit is extremely important to what the Indian squash circuit is, is trying to... Uh, for what the Indian squash circuit is um, trying to do here. Um, so this year, we, we, well, we always try to sort of recognize juniors and other individuals who try who do a lot to sort of enrich our sport and this year we have three inspiring juniors we'd like to honor and we would actually um, like to ask Tarek Momen if he could please come back here and give some of awards to our to our up-and-coming youngsters um, so the first one um, he's been one of the foremost juniors in the country for some years now and he's won numerous junior national titles. He's got lots of silverware in his cabinet. He's a cool customer on and off court. He raised it a few notches higher at the junior nationals this last year when he beat Yash Fateh in three well-fought games. Our most promising junior from Otters Club and the Star Academy, ladies and gentlemen, Neil Joshi. up. She's only 15 years old, but over the last two years she's improved considerably from being a player who can hit hard to someone with better mov movement, court craft and presence. We think really highly of her and believe she can do some special things going forward. She was the Indian number one player in the World Junior, in the World Junior Women's Team Championships last year from Karjam Khanna, Ashwarya Kupchandani. Um, so another recognition we would like to make this evening is for a man who's been in our sport for decades. He's invested a significant amount of time, effort, energy and money helping grow and popularize the, our game. Along with his team, he's endeavored to make, take the game to rural Maharashtra. His organization, the ISP, has put up over a hundred tournaments over the years. Let's have a loud Mumbai round of applause for Mahendra Garwal. Sadly, he could not be with us today, so we request a core member of his team, Sanjay Goyal, to please accept the award on his behalf. This one's just a really inspiring one. It inspires me. Um, so as many of you may know, Ritwik Bhattacharya has been the torchbearer of Indian squash for a long time. He was the first Indian to break into the top 50 in the world rankings. So squad is def squash is definitely part of his DNA. After calling a halt to his playing career, he is fully engaged with helping the sport grow meaningfully. One effort in, he's made is um, to co-found Indian Squash Circuit along with Raj Arora. Another successful venture is the Star Academy, which is in a small village near Kapoli in the outskirts of, on the outskirts of Mumbai. The impact of what has been created in rural environments is simply amazing. I myself have been training there and it's just, I'm so fortunate to call Rithwik my coach and train um, at the academy. Village kids have been given hope, they've been given dreams, they're being mentored, their lives are being given, given a direction that they could potent that could potentially change things, um, even if in a very small way to begin with. 
today when one sees the sort of the curiosity in their eyes and sees them share shoes and rackets and strike the ball with undying determination, it's honestly the most unbelievable world, thing in the world to see. So today we seek to honor a young lady from this setup. Bijli Tarwada has been absolutely wonderful. I've played with her myself and I've watched her grow. A keen learner and older sister to some. She's a responsible team member and now even a performer. In the Junior Nationals, which were just held, she reached an unbelievable 10th in the girls under 19 after having played for squash for just one year, which is unbelievable. So please give us a big round of applause for Bijli. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tariq. Thanks. Okay, so...